Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahirabbilalamin wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Senang sekali bisa berjumpa kembali di channel Donditan dan Graham Walaf Jakarta. Alhamdulillah pada malam hari ini saya mempunyai seorang tamu yang sangat istimewa dari negeri yang cukup jauh ya. Ini adalah seorang pendakwa Islam yang luar biasa. Mungkin uh, para pemirsa juga sudah sangat mengenal sosok ini yaitu Brother Paul Williams ya dari channel Blogging Teologi. Kita sudah sama-sama mengenal kiprah beliau yang berkiprah di Speakers Corner juga ya. Juga sekarang beliau membangun sebuah channel yang sangat kuat dan sangat besar, yaitu channel Blogging Teologi. Nah, untuk tidak me memperlama perkenalan ya, saya langsung saja akan tampilkan uh, Brother Paul Williams ya. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, Brother Paul. Waalaikumsalam. Great to see you. Great to see you. Great to see you, Paul. Uh, I'm very happy to see you, to know you in person, even though only online. Uh, actually, many fans of you in Indonesia are waiting for us to discuss about uh, dakwah of Islam, yeah, in 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 the whole world, yeah, because we know that you actually master the the dakwah of Islam and you know well about the Christianity. So, mm. so we are we are waiting for your uh, explanation about the Islam and Christianity. How are you, Paul? Alhamdulillah, I'm very well. I'm in London here in the United Kingdom, where it's still cold and rainy, and we're looking forward to some sunshine. <laughs> That's pretty typical for life here in, in London, actually. But Alhamdulillah, our life is good here, and uh, it's great to be on your show, and thank you very much uh, for inviting me. Thank you very much, Paul. I have a suggestion. Uh, during the winter, why don't you come to Indonesia? We have a ah, very beautiful winter here. Great idea. Why didn't I think of that? Fantastic idea. I've just been waiting for an invitation. Inshallah. Okay, great. I hope I hope you can come to Indonesia one time. Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. So, Paul, can we start our discussion, Paul? Please, please. Yeah. So, hey, sorry, sorry, sorry. Before we start our discussion, I want to show you something. Okay, please wait a minute. Okay. Lizzie here. And uh, Jay Smith is standing over there from Profound uh, Ministries um, to a, a debate today uh, because I feel that uh, a number of things they've been saying, not just last week and the week before, but over the years. Uh... Do you remember that, Paul? Oh, dear. Yes, I, I, sadly, I do remember it a long time ago. Sadly. <laughs> Why yeah, sadly? Well. <laughs> yeah, that was a very, a very, that was at Speaker's Corner, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, um, and um, some years ago, and there, there was a famous or notorious American evangelist uh, missionary called Jay mm. Smith. He's still active uh, on social media, I think. Uh, he's now yeah. gone to America. But this is Speaker's Corner. Um, and he, he was um, he, he has a very powerful voice and he's quite charismatic. And uh, so he has an influence on Christians, particularly yeah. uh, evangelical Christians. Um, yeah. But he has a tendency, unfortunately, to lie uh, and misrepresent and distort uh, uh, the teachings of Islam and uh, what Muslims are about. And, and on that day, I decided to call him out on a particularly um, vicious lie. He was stirring up hatred, actually, uh, against mm. Muslims in London by lying, by saying that in his part of London, in an area called Harrow, uh, mm. uh, Muslims has successfully... Uh, got all the supermarkets and shops to ban pork. And you, he said, mm. I can't buy pork anywhere in my area. And I thought, this is very strange. I don't believe a word of this. So I actually, <laughs> I decided to ring up the local supermarket. I went on Google and I mm. went to Tesco's in Harrow and so on. And I actually called these places and I said, um, I didn't obviously explain who Jay Smith was or who I just said, oh, do, do you sell bacon? Uh, do you sell pork in your mm. supermarket? So, oh, yeah, we, we sell a wide range of pork products. and So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, I was then satisfied. I mean, I knew it was a lie, but I just had to go through the emotions just to assure myself uh, scientifically, if you like, that uh, Jay Smith was lying. And so he actually came back the following week, I think, and I challenged him to speak his corner. Mm. I 
I said, you, you, you lied. I've checked uh, with Harrow and they, um, they, of course, they stop uh, all the food that you and anyone would want to eat. So I called him out and he was a bit embarrassed. And his defense, he made a video, I think, later on. His defense was by stirring up this hatred because Muslims are, uh, are often a minority in the West and we are vulnerable to uh, attacks and misunderstandings. If, if if people think we're doing bad things, you know, uh, then we're, we're vulnerable to attacks, particularly if we're lied about. So what he did was pretty nasty um, mm -hmm. and, and stirring up uh, community uh, uh, hatred, perhaps. And, and people might want to attack Muslims for stopping mm -hmm. them to eat pork, you know, eating ham or eating mm. whatever. So he made a video later um, and his excuse was it was just a joke. He was just a joke. A joke. He was just, oh, you're taking it too seriously, Paul. You're taking it too seriously. This is this is just a bit of humor, you see. But this isn't humor. This is not humor. Mm. If you lie about a minority in a majority Christian or secular country, you can be, uh, you know, it, it, it creates problems for people in terms of relationships, in terms of attacks and so on. And he has a history of lying about Muslims and fueling Islamophobia. And that's why I called him out. And that was a particularly alhamdulillah, good example where I was able to really uh, expose him, uh, Jay Smith, the liar. And he, he's often lies uh, about mm. him. So he's a, a dishonest character. And uh, But many Christians follow him, unfortunately. And that, that's uh, that's another story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, Paul, actually, uh, what I want to say to you about, uh, with, with showing this is, you know, this uh, video is also... Uh, in the channel of SC Dakwah Nusantara, right? Yeah, yeah I know the yeah. brothers uh, in in London who are involved in that. Yeah, yeah, brother Nafit, right? Yeah, yeah, no, the good brothers. Yeah, so actually, that uh, there is a subtitle, Indonesian subtitle, right? Uh huh. I can't. Uh, yeah, you have to translate it for me. Yeah, actually, I did the subtitle for brother Nafit. Oh, really? Oh, well done. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, thank you very, very much indeed. Yes. Uh, fantastic work. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. Actually, uh, we enjoy your discussion uh, very much. Okay. And I work for Brother Nafit since 2018 to 2020. Really? I so didn't know. I, yeah, I translated about 100 videos for his channels. Amazing. So that's why I know you very well, uh, Paul. <laughs> but we never met in, even though uh, through online. True. So I'm very happy now. I can see you online. I also saw your many many of your videos with uh, your uh, your guests, including uh, Rabbi Tobias Singer, right? Yes, 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 yes. And I also one time I did a podcast with him, ah. uh, Rabbi Tobias Singer, and we have a very beautiful discussion about uh, Jews, uh, Christianity, and Islam. Yeah, so he's a I, man, actually in many ways. Yeah. Yeah, so I hope today we can uh, give the audience a very fruitful discussion. So, okay. first first question: When did you convert or refer to Islam, uh, Paul? Well, it was some year. It was some years ago now, actually, and um, I, I just went to my local mosque uh, here in London, Regent's Park Mosque. It's the got quite a famous mosque here, and uh, I uh, uh, some months before I decided to find out more about Islam, and I. Uh, spoke to some Muslims there. I read the Quran in English, and and I was a Christian at the time. And uh, but Alhamdulillah, I, I uh, went there and I spoke to the Imam. Went to his office and uh, uh, with some witnesses, and I, I said uh, the Shahada, of course. And um, and I must go back there actually get because it's a certificate. It's a certificate actually, and it has the the official wording on. And I, I I don't think I ever got a copy of that. So thanks for reminding me. I must go back there and get a copy and just just okay. frame it and put it on the wall. <laughs> I think that would be nice. I've completely forgot about that. Okay, okay, no problem. So, uh, Paul, to go to our main discussion, I actually, because you are European, living in UK, I want yeah. to know now how is Islam growth in UK, especially, and in the European, uh, I mean, generally. Can you tell us, Paul? Yes, this is a really good question, and um, I, 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 I've, I've asked this question of a lot of people, and... Uh, I, I'd tell you a story about a, a year or so ago, I was uh, going up to, to, to Birmingham. It's a big city here in England, uh, perhaps the second city of, of England after London. 
And um, I, I was there to meet Sheikh Azra Rashid, who's a very uh, wonderful Muslim uh, scholar and imam in Birmingham. And so, some brothers picked me up at the, the railway station. I've not been to Birmingham for a long, long time, not as a Muslim, that's for sure. Um, and I, I said to them, as a young brother, I said, so, you know, because I, I know a lot of Muslims, there are a lot of Muslims in Birmingham. I think maybe even half the city or something, or nearly that, is, is Muslim, alhamdulillah. So I said to them, um, you know, are the Muslim youth in Birmingham, are, are they practicing, you know, and during Ramadan, do they pray and so on? And they said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah they're, 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 they're very strong Muslims. And, and they, they told me that, that they are more practicing, stronger in their deen than their parents. And their parents are, were stronger or are stronger in their deen than their parents, the original economic migrants to England, to the UK. So what we're seeing is a generate every generation we're seeing a stronger practice of Islam in in Birmingham. I thought that's remarkable. And then I kind of asked around. I spoke to uh, I've got a friend of mine in Holland, and I, I go to Germany a fair bit, and and in France and uh, Scandinavia. I, I know um, Islamic scholar uh, in in Sweden, um, uh, Sheikh Abdullah Swedi, a great Islamic scholar in Medina, um, who's Swedish. And he says to me, they all say to me the same thing. Uh, and I've noticed this as well in Berlin. I've noticed this um, uh, elsewhere that um, Islam is perhaps surprisingly, in fact, it is surprising, actually, in some ways, experiencing a revival, a strengthening in um, Europe. Now, this is not just because of immigration. Yes, of course, there is immigration, Muslim immigration, Afghanistan, Iraq, all these countries we've invaded, unfortunately. But it's more than that, that the, these young people, the people coming here are practicing their faith, particularly young people. They care mm. about spiritual values. They care about uh, following God uh, and all the, the amazing teaching that Islam has for, for people, actually. It's not just in the West, for, for all of humanity, actually. So it's an amazing story. But at the same time, and I've got to say this, um, I was sp speaking to Professor Linda Woodhead, who's a professor of sociology of religion at King's College here in London. It's a very eminent college. And uh, I spoke to her on blogging theology about a census that was done last year of the whole United Kingdom. And um, within that census of the population, uh, it spoke about people's religious um, beliefs and if they go to church and so on. And religion in general in Britain is declining. Uh, people are, and this has been going on for a long time now. I mean, the statistics every year, they go down and down and down and down. Fewer and fewer people go to church, Catholic, Protestant, whatever. Fewer and fewer people go to synagogue. But the big exception is Islam. Uh, and the opposite is happening. And I asked her why. I said, well, what, why is this happening? Because she's a sociologist. So she's not a Muslim. Or, uh, I mean, so she gave reasons like, well, Islam is cool amongst the youth in Britain, non-Muslim youth. OK, I didn't know that. It's funny having an academic saying using the word cool, you know, describing Islam. Um, and, and also the, 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 the strong sense of family, the interconnectedness of the, the, the of people's family. Uh, so it's not just a man and a woman and one child. It's, you know, you have mm -hmm. uncles and aunties and cousins and nephews and nieces. And, and you get this sense of community and neighborhood. That doesn't really exist so much, unfortunately, in the wider society. So you see this in Ramadan, of course, a very, very family-centered event, I think, like, uh, the month. Um, she was giving these sociological reasons about how, you know, um, Muslim fashion is is uh, music and is popular in uh, globally that's based in London. Um, but it's obviously more than that. It's an awful lot more than that. It is the attraction of Islam itself and the answers mm. it provides to young people who are not given guidance or answers to life's the meaning of life, life's problems, how to be a good person. What does it mean to 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 be a human being? Uh, actually, you know, our society doesn't give you answers anymore, and Christianity. Mm unfortunately, has failed to do that. And there are, there are lots of reasons why. Maybe we'll come to that. But Islam, in a purely sociological sense, is a huge success story in Europe. And mm. English, to talk about the UK, has become mm. an Islamic language. There is actually Islamic scholarship being published in English in the first instance at the Cambridge Muslim College in Cambridge, for example, uh, Zaytuna in California, and other places. So it is very interesting what's what's going on here. Mm. So you're saying that now you can easily find a mosque in London? Oh, absolutely. Very easily. 
And the other thing I've noticed, I, I've been to some Arab countries, very fortunate, in, in a couple of, in the last year or two, a lot of mosques, uh, at the same in Turkey, are closed, uh, actually, between prayers. Mm. You know, so after Maghreb, the mosque is closed. And this is very true. In, in London, they're not. They're open all the time, actually. Uh, they just don't close. I mean, they may close at night, but they, they are just closed between prayers. So you can pray and then you can you can relax and you can talk to your brothers and sisters and, uh, and have some sense of community. You're not just there to just do the prayer and then close everything down and go home. It, it's, uh -huh. it's, a, it's a real community center as well. And that's normal here. Um, but it's not normal in, in some Muslim country, uh, Muslim majority countries, without naming names that I've been to, where it seems to be the case they close the mosques. And the reasons for that, I think, they're the rulers are afraid of, you know, Muslims, you know, getting together and talking and, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. But other than the immigrants, do you say that uh, Western people like you also embracing Islam? Yes, uh, increasingly so. And, th and there are some reasons for that. Um, Uh, we noticed this Ramadan last year, Ramadan this year, uh, the huge spike everywhere uh, mm -hmm. of people becoming uh, Muslims. This is a really a surprising phenomenon. Um, and I, I think, uh, so the, the, yes, is the answer. Also, I think there's the the terrible genocide we're seeing at the moment in Gaza. And, and that is having a huge impact in the United States. We're seeing these protests uh sweeping the United States at the moment in universities from California to New York, uh, East mm -hmm. and West. Um, young people, are amazingly, they're actually standing up for the, the human dignity and the rights of uh, Palestinians, who, of course, are our brothers and sisters. So and of course, with that comes an interest in the holy book of Islam, the Quran uh, and, and, and Islam. And 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 you see, you know, uh, non-Muslims talking about the Quran on TikTok and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Masya Allah, yeah. So, do you know how many approximately Muslims in UK and, I mean, and also in Europe? Um, I'm not 100, no, I'm not very sure. I think it's about 4 million uh, Muslims, more or less, in UK out of a population of, I don't know, 70, 80 million or something. I'm not sure. Uh, it, the, the biggest population is in, in, in France and Germany, of course. France used to uh, uh, colonial oc occupy Muslim lands like Algeria and Morocco and so on. Um, and so you get a, a lot of Algerian people from North Africa and elsewhere in France and in Germany, Turkish people. Uh, but I don't know the numbers, but it's far more in France and Germany. But they are much more repressed mm. and oppressed in on the continent. And this is everyone said, I've seen this. Uh, you, the Muslims in these countries, although they these countries claim to be free, mm. Uh, claim mm. to believe in freedom of religion and freedom of speech. This is a lie. It's not true because there's a lot you can't say and do mm. in France and Germany. And I've seen it. It's happening as we speak. Uh, mm. And um, it's terrible what's happening here uh, well, it, it, on the continent. It's much better here in the UK. I'm not just saying that because I'm from here. It really is. Um, there's much more freedom and tolerance uh, to for Muslims to practice their faith. Uh, women particularly are free to Uh, live as Muslims in the UK in ways they're not in France and Germany and, and many other countries mm. in Europe. Yeah, I also read that the uh, France government also not very friendly with Islams, right? Yeah, that, that, no, France is very hostile, unfortunately, to Muslims. And uh, that they don't mind Muslims as long as <clears throat> Muslims keep it private, don't talk about it in public, don't show any Muslim identity, don't practice as Muslims in public. If they keep it hidden in private, that's okay. And it's a bit like it reminds me of like Eastern Europe under the Soviet in the Soviet era, where you know uh, East East Germany and Poland and so on. They said, "Oh, well, you're free to practice your practice and speak, but you have to do it in secret." Mm, um, nice. it's, a like, it's a bit like that in in uh, a lot of Europe. It's not like that here, though, um, for historical reasons. It's, it's a bit different. Mm -hmm. So actually, uh, Paul. We can say that uh, the colonial uh, countries like UK, Dutch, France, which they used to have a lot of uh, countries under yeah. their colonialism. Yeah. So now the growth of Islam is actually because of the colonialism also, yeah, because they brought some immigration to rebuild yeah. the country after the war. And yeah. now because of that uh, immigration, immigrant also, now mm. Islam is getting bigger and bigger in that, uh, in that country yeah. also, yeah. 
But what so, they expected, what, what people here expected in Europe expected was that when Muslims came here, that they mm. would secularize, that they mm. would become uh, Western, liberal, secular, atheist, mm. that they would, they, they would basically lose, they would just become cultural Muslims, uh -huh. like, like Christians are cultural Christians. Uh -huh. um, but that didn't happen. And they didn't expect this. This is a big mistake and a big policy error they made. They thought that Muslims would simply become drink alcohol, eat pork, mm. celebrate Christmas and be call themselves Muslims and, you know, have girlfriends. And, mm. uh, you know, and, and but this hasn't happened. So mm. this is a huge surprise to the West. Mm. We really expected with all the media and the education and the state, the state propaganda and so on, that, that Muslims would basically become like everyone else and give up mm. their really apart from in name they, they call themselves muslims of course mm -hmm. uh, but that's in not fact, that's not happened yeah in fact now some muslims become part of your government right yes um well uh i don't know about this government yeah i, I, I we have a, a guy called hamza yusuf who's the head of the mm. scottish government he's about to resign as we speak by the way it's in the media nice. but but these these leaders and we have a, a muslim mayor in london but these Muslims have been widely criticized by the Muslim community for actually not really being Muslim at all. That they are supporting a very secular LGBT. They support that. They support Zionism uh, and they support all sorts of causes which Muslims wouldn't support. So there's a great deal of skepticism about what mm. happens when you get, get into power in Europe. Do you basically give up your deen? And that's, that is the, a very popular criticism of these politicians understood understood yeah 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 we cannot we cannot uh justify that all muslims follow the teaching of islam right correct yeah so uh now <clears throat> i want to know how about the european people think about christianity these days paul wow yeah well as, as i've mentioned christianity is in decline uh very much so in france in britain in germany in fact throughout europe uh, in places, Italy, Spain, Portugal. And this has been going on for a long time, actually. And um, there, are, there are many reasons um, that one might speculate about. Uh, that I think many people just don't see the relevance of Christianity to their lives anymore. Uh, it doesn't provide answers or answers they like. Um, and most people follow a very materialistic uh, existence where they live for money, for wealth, for uh, that holiday, that better car, that better wife, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. this is a very popular uh, thing. And, uh, uh, and and so I think Europe as a whole, or the West as a whole, I should say, mm -hmm. there's some exceptions um, in, in, in places here and there, like in America, in some places, in America, nevertheless, mostly has lost its meaning and its purpose. Why does the West exist? You know, what is, what is the point of our lives here in the West? There used to be a religious understanding of that, it, it, uh, you know, in the past. But now what we, we say we're for freedom. We say we're for human rights and individual respect and, and autonomy and so on. But mm -hmm. most of the world can see this as complete rubbish and it's a complete lie because of what the West is doing in giving unconditional support to a regime that is committing mm -hmm. genocide. And when I mean support, it's military support. It's actually giving mm. them bombs to kill innocent people and then pretending that there isn't a genocide and then giving them cover at the United Nations and then giving them political support. And this horrifies the world, rightly so. And so no one believes them. You know, how, we can't take this seriously anymore. So what is the purpose of the West? And, and we've lost our way. We've lost our uh, any meaning uh, in our lives here. And it's very sad. And I wish Christian, as a Muslim, I say I wish Christianity was strong in Europe because it would then at least be the faith of the people of the book, believe in God, they believe in Jesus, the prophets, of course, and they would provide at least some kind of resistance to secularism and the nihilism and the materialism that is so prevalent in the West. But mm. unfortunately, Christianity is dying here. But I do want to stress it's not dying everywhere else. It's not dying. Mm. Uh, China or South America, uh, particularly, or in some parts of America uh, and in uh, obviously places in Africa, it's not dying actually. Mm -hmm. But in Europe, it is Western Europe, but it's not in Eastern Europe, it's not in Poland, it's not dying there, it's not dying in Russia. The church is strong, the Orthodox Russian church is strong there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, 
you know, it's only a small part of the world that's where it's dying. But unfortunately, that part of the world is very is outsized. It has a disproportionate influence in terms of geopolitics and media and military power, mm. of course. Um, you know, we, there, there are a few people that sit on the United Nations Security Council and Britain yeah. is one of them. But why? <laughs> it's a tiny little country. Why are we yeah. on the United Nations Security Council? Where are the Arab countries? Where are the Muslim mm. countries? Where's Malaysia? Where's Indonesia? Why, yes. why are you on the Security Council? You have, you have hundreds of millions of people. Um, so it's a very unfair system. Yeah, correct. You are correct. So Christianity, in fact, in Indonesia is a slightly declining, but we cannot say that it's, uh, Christianity is also, uh, I mean, falling, just declining a bit. Uh, fortunately, in Indonesia, since 19, uh, 2019 to 2022, Islam is still growing, yeah, about, I will show you, I will show you uh, a little bit data. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, so wait, 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 wait. I have some uh, data from our religion of, uh, Ministry of Religion. Oh, yeah. That uh, actually Christianity in Indonesia is declining with. Where is this? Oh, it's not a window. Ah, here, here. Ah, can you see, Paul? Ah. This is the population of Indonesia uh, based on the religion. Islam uh, is still growing, yeah, from 2019 to 2022 with increase of 0.33%. Uh, a Protestant and Catholic is this is declining uh, 0 0.16 percent and 0 0.06 percent. Ah, how to say this is actually they are doing a lot of uh, missionary in Indonesia. Yes. But in fact, in the field, they are declining. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I don't know now. I heard that now Indonesia is not the biggest uh, Muslim country anymore. I heard that. Pakistan now is the biggest Muslim country in the world. It's true. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Gosh. Yeah, yeah. Gosh. And uh, followed by Indonesia in the second, and then followed by India in the third. Yeah. Yeah, but but we also have to confirm. So uh, I also have a friend in Italy. He said that now most most of most of the people in Italy also now become atheists, and and she said that the churches in Italy. Now it's empty. The people who come to the church is only the old people and also the immigrants. Now many people in Italy now become an atheist. Yeah. So uh, now we are going to talk about our main discussion. So I want to heard from I want to hear from you about the, your thoughts about Christianity. Can you please uh, explore to us, uh, Paul? Well, that's a big subject. I mean, is any particular, I mean, it's a huge religion with many different uh, subjects within it and it's history, it's theology, the Bible uh, and and, uh, and so on. Was there any particular area you wanted to focus on? No, I want to focus on the doctrine only. Doctrine? Yes, because, uh, you know, we have to educate the people that actually Christianity, if they are not doing the missionary to other uh, religion, we... We don't, we, know, we don't need to do anything about this. We don't need to do da'wah. But they do the missionary a lot in the whole world so that they, uh, I mean, they are inviting people to go to Christianity. So, uh, in fact, they are doing door-to-door -door missionary. In Indonesia, we have a lot of uh, that activity. For, so that's why I also think that I need to do this, to do da'wah, to protect our Muslim people. Yeah, so I need you to do some uh your thoughts about the doctrine of christianity only okay i mean i can't really do much here now on, on this short video so uh, i'm just going to give a few a few indications perhaps you, 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 if people people involved in dawa in my view need to uh really look uh, study this a bit more deeply we can't do that now uh but there are lots of excellent resources online now as well as books that people can uh read to really understand this subject better and um, we need to have 
uh, that there are certain myths that, that some Muslims believe. Maybe I'll, I'll tackle that in, in a minute. But um, the, the central doctrines of, of Christianity, or all branches really of Christianity today, are the doctrines of the Trinity, the idea that God is three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And each of these persons is fully God. So the Father is fully God. The Son is fully God. The Son is Jesus, of course. And the Holy Spirit is fully God. Um, the, another key doctrine is the doctrine of the incarnation. This is when God the Son became a human being as Jesus of Nazareth two, 2,000 years ago in Palestine, of course. Mm. Um, uh, uh, other key beliefs are the, the belief that Jesus died on a cross uh, and rose again from the dead. Uh, and another key uh, belief is the belief in the Bible, of course. The Bible is seen as uh, the inspired word of God. It contains the Old and New Testament. And in the New mm -hmm. Testament, there are four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which uh, Christians believe tell us about the life of Jesus, his life, death, and resurrection. Uh, there are many other doctrines that particular churches have, like the Catholic Church believes in purgatory. Uh, it has very interesting views about Mary who they call the mother of God, Theotokos. They have interesting beliefs about the Eucharist, uh, being the literal flesh and blood of Jesus at, at, during the Mass and so on. But perhaps we'll put those to one side. Just focus then, I think, is what you want me to do, on the Trinity and the Incarnation. And mm -hmm. one of the strange things is, uh, if you look at the history of the early church in the first century, this is the first hundred years or so after Jesus, uh, that people didn't talk about the Trinity. It wasn't mm. really the doctrine of the Trinity. The idea that God is three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is a much later doctrine. And it was really worked out in the the, 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 the third and fourth and fifth centuries AD mm. uh, in, in, in groups of bishops called councils at the Council of Chalcedon, for example, mm. and mm -hmm. Constantinople and so on. We won't go into that. Um, so the, these were doctrines that were hammered out much later than the time of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So if you'd ask Jesus, uh, and indeed the Gospel of Mark, uh, has someone asked Jesus, chapter 12, a man came to Jesus and said, what is the greatest commandment? What is the greatest commandment? Now, if you ask Christians this question, I've done it hundreds of times, mm. and they all give the same answer. Oh, the greatest <laughs> commandment is... Uh, Love your, neighbor. You love your neighbor. And I'm thinking, <laughs> wrong answer. That's not uh -huh. what the gospel says. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, Jesus yeah. gave the correct answer, of course, which was uh, quoting the Shema. This is a Hebrew word meaning here. And mm. it's from words from Deuteronomy, chapter mm. 6, verse 4. This is in the yes. Torah in the Old Testament. And he mm. quotes this as a good Jew would. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Yes. Echad. Echad is yes. the actual word for one. And the word yeah. Echad we find in the Quran, in the 112th yes. uh, uh, chapter of the Quran, where we yes. have the word Achad, the yes. Arabic word. It's the same word. It's a cognate Correct. language in Arabic and Hebrew or Aramaic. It's, it's, it's the same cognate language. So Jesus, to this person in the Gospel of Mark, restates, reaffirms the oneness of God as understood in Deuteronomy, they knew mm. nothing about a trinity, of course, mm. uh, and and Tawhid, the, the mm. unity of God, the oneness of God, not the threeness. There's no mention mm. of the three. So this is the creed of Jesus Christ, if I can put it that way, which mm. is the, is the Jewish creed, which is the same mm. as the Muslim creed, that God is one, not three mm. or two mm -hmm. or, four or six or whatever number you want to throw at us. Um, so that's interesting, because if we were to follow the creed of Jesus, then we wouldn't be saying three. But nevertheless, the church decided to follow, to say three. Um, the other, but, and so you have this paradox or this contradiction, many would say, I would say, actually, that if you believe the Trinity, that the Father is fully God, the Son is fully God, the, uh, the Holy Spirit is fully God, how many gods are there? I would say that there are three divine beings. Mm. Each is fully God. That's what Orthodox Christian doctrine teaches. That's not monotheism, the belief mm. in the oneness of God. That is threeism, tritheism, uh, or even polytheism. Even though mm. Christians protest and say, no, no, we believe in one God. I'm saying, well, you believe in one God, but you teach God is three divine beings. Mm. And this is, you know, uh, um, 
very different from what Moses upon whom be peace and mm. Jesus upon whom be peace actually taught in Deuteronomy and in the earliest gospel of Mark that we still have. And then we have the idea that God became a man. Mm. This actually is not found in any of our early sources. If you look at the mm. gospel of Matthew, Mark and Luke, you will not find the understanding or the belief that Jesus became man. Just, it's not there. Yeah. yeah. At all. It is there in John, the last one to be written, uh, but it's not there in the earlier Gospels, which is mm. interesting. Um, and the idea that the infinite can be contained within the finite, that mm. God is infinite, can be somehow enveloped or contained within a, bo a human body is, uh, you know, at best absurd. Uh, mm. And it is, in fact, blasphemous. It, it doesn't make any sense. God can't be contained within a human or any creature mm -hmm. in the universe god is transcendent he is infinite he is far above being contained within a human body uh mm -hmm. so it's actually quite a popular idea though in some ways in the ancient greco roman world or the, Ro mm -hmm. the world of the roman empire when i the idea that a god could become a human being was very popular you know uh, 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 in in the pagan religions mm -hmm. but in Within the, the the religion of Moses, the religion of the prophets, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. I could go on and on and on forever about this. So I just want to give you a, a, just a little bit of a, a a taster of the kinds of issues I think that Christians have to face. Uh, Paul, you know why? Do you know why that uh, Christianity claim to be monotheism, right? Because they have the Old Testament with the New Testaments. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. fact, in fact, the Old Testament is actually not belong to Christianity. In fact, Old Testament is belong to the Jews. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, because the Old Testament is uh, coming from the Septuagint, which mm -hmm. is the book that uh, translated from the Hebrew Tanakh. Uh, Tanakh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tanakh is belong to the Jews, which there is no concept of God become a human, right? Exactly. And then also, and, and, and there's no concept of the Messiah of the jewish messiah the the tanakh as you call as you rightly call it the the old testament as the christians call it um mm. has no understanding there's no prophecy about a messiah dying for the sins of the world and then right. rising again from the dead although that is the claim in paul says in 1 corinthians chapter 15 verse 3 he actually says that mm. the jewish scriptures say this mm. but i've read the jewish scriptures from cover to cover i've never found anywhere that it says mm. a messiah would die for people's sins on the contrary if you read mm. the Tanakh, you read the messiah will be victorious over his enemies mm. he will be a, a king like david david is in a sense the archetypal messiah one who is anointed by god and he was victorious mm. he wasn't supposed to be horribly tortured to death by his enemies so this is a very new idea that's not found in judaism at all mm. before the rise of christianity and Christians often don't realize this, that no Jew ever known to us in the Bible or outside of the Bible in any other text ever mentioned or claimed mm. or prophesied that the Messiah would die for sins. This is an unknown idea before the rise of Christianity. So it, it's a bidder. It's a bidder. Mm. Oh, bidder. <laughs> MashaAllah. So actually, yeah, yeah, you are, you are all right that uh, the concept of the Messiah in Jews there is no concept that this Messiah is the God himself come become human, right? And they also said that this Messiah will come after the whole world knows the, the true God. They also said that this Messiah will, uh, I mean, will, have, will be the king of the Israel after there is no war in the world, right? And also they said that this Messiah is not the one who come and then finish the mission and then go and back again there is no such a concept in the in the jews right so actually now i i try to educate these things to our muslim uh, fellows in indonesia with our with my videos that christianity took this uh tanah and then become septuagint and then become their own uh, holy scriptures which 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 called uh, old testament and they claim that Jesus was prophesied in this Old Testament. There is the, how to say, we cannot, we cannot just uh, do some 
our own thinking on the other people's uh, scriptures, right? Uh, so this Christianity, now they are trying to promote that Jesus was prophesied in the Old Testament. In fact, no Jews said that there is a prophesied for Jesus in the in the Tanakh. So there is a problem. This is actually a big problem. So that's why I want to to in, to inform our uh, Muslim friends in the whole world that Christianity is doing something. How to say? Just to promote that they are monotheism, but in fact they are not monotheism. And I actually, think, this is uh, sorry. And actually, this thing was uh, confirmed by one of the church father in the fourth century, uh, which call uh, Saint Gregory Nisa. Saint Gregory Nisa acknowledged that the monotheism of the Jews was uh, combined with the polytheism of uh, Greek, and then they merged the monotheism uh, and the Greek uh, and the polytheism of the Greek become Christianity. Mm-hmm. What do you thought? What do you think, Paul? Yeah, that that that's that's true. I, I think we need to be a little bit careful that not all Christians or people who call themselves Christians uh, believe in the Trinity. There are there are a number of Christians, a minority, but a big minority, who uh, when they pray, they they pray to God. They don't they don't worship Jesus. They don't they, they do recognize Jesus as a prophet. Uh, messiah they're quite close to muslims in in that respect uh, actually so they may say they believe in the christian doctrines but when you ask them in practice i've discovered that they actually Mm -hmm. do quickly acknowledge that only really god or god the father as they they would call it is god uh, and that Mm -hmm. jesus is not god in that sense and the idea also and this is another problem really that christians tie themselves up in knots about the idea that okay well god jesus died for their sins they believe uh, so they believe God died. Um, and of course, the Bible is very clear in many passages that God is immortal. An immortal being, by definition, does not die. So then they say, and this is, it's like a game of chess. And I know the same moves. I know what move they're going to make, what move I make. Uh, I play mm. the game so many times. I know what they're going to say. So I say God can't die. The, your Bible mm. says God is immortal. God is eternal. An eternal mm. being is not mortal, obviously. Ah, yes, they say. So it was Jesus' body that died. Okay. The human Jesus. And I'm saying, hang on. You believe that a human sacrifice somehow atones for your sins? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no. It was the whole Jesus. But hang on. The Jesus you believe in is God and human. And they go up and down and bounce around and it gets very confusing for them. Um, Mm. (laughs) And but of course, the the idea of a human sacrifice is actually Mm. condemned in the Bible in many places so even their religion of human sacrifice is condemned by god obviously and and why can't god forgive people what why why is god so uh bound by the idea or necessitated to have a human sacrifice before he can forgive and then i focus and you've got to know your bible to do this by the way and this is something that that people involved in doubt would help if they knew the bible a little bit well I, i i then refer to the teaching of jesus in the early gospels where Jesus does speak about God freely forgiving people mm-hmm. their sin, uh, without requiring any kind of sac- human sacrifice at all. Mm. This is the authentic Jesus, the Jesus that Muslims recognize uh, Jesus as a, a Muslim prophet, uh, which mm-hmm. of course. Right. And uh, actually, we know that the teaching in Christianity, if we read the Bible carefully, Actually, the teaching in Christianity is not back to Jesus, but back to Paul, right? Mm. The Paul of Tarsus. Nah. So now I want to hear your thoughts about about this Paul, not your Paul. I mean, no, say, please don't blame me for the uh, cause. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'm I'm not that old. Uh, <laughs> um, so yes, well, a lot of people say that Paul founded Christianity. And I think Mm. that's not quite true. I I think he certainly contributed a lot to what we call Mm. Christianity. But he he does say in in one of his letters in 1 Corinthians Mm. that I I pass on to you what I myself Mm. received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and was buried and rose again from the dead in accordance with the scriptures. That's almost Mm. an amazing quote in English. Now, why does this matter? Because he's referring to a tradition that he himself Mm. received about that belief. But the belief that he bears witness to that the 
the Jewish scriptures talk about a Messiah dying and being buried and rising on the third day, as I've already said, is simply not there. I mean, seriously, if you look it up, try and find it anywhere in the Bible, in the mm -hmm. Genesis through to Malachi in the Christian Bible, um, where it talks about the Messiah dying for sins. And it's very... Mm -hmm. It's embarrassing when I have these conversations. I don't want to embarrass people, you know. Mm -hmm. I say, well, it's not really there, is it, in your Old Testament? And they and they look at me and I can think, I'm thinking, oh, no, they don't have an answer. <laughs> but, but it's true, <laughs> there is no answer. Um, and they may come up with like a bizarre passage from, I don't know, Jonah or something, which doesn't mention the Messiah dying and rising at all, you know, but, but they think mm -hmm. it does that job. You think, you serious? This passage doesn't talk about this at all. Um so I think Paul, though, did have a huge influence more than anyone, more than Jesus, actually, in yes. the rise of Christianity, as we see yes. it, we know it. Uh, and and the, the key difference is this. This is my, my view, that Christianity uh, from Paul onwards is a religion about Jesus. Mm. Paul, uh, in his letters, like in Romans and Galatians and so on, he talks about Jesus. So I believe he says in Jesus, the de his death and resurrection, for example. Mm -hmm. That is Christianity, what we call Christianity. It always has been for nearly 2,000 years. But that is not the religion of Jesus. Mm. The religion of Jesus is very different. Mm. Jesus did not go around preaching his death and resurrection. To, mm -hmm. to believe in that if you look at say the gospel of luke for example he never says yeah. this um so how are we how are we made right by god according to the gospel of luke well there's a wonderful story there of the tax collector and the pharisee mm. they both go up to the temple to pray this is in luke 18 mm. luke 19 um and the 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 tax collector the bad guy you know in the story because mm. he collects taxes on behalf of the romans you know he's, mm. a, he's a traitor to his people you know he's a jewish tax collector um, mm -hmm. He beats his chest. This is a story from Jesus. He beats his chest, won't even look up to heaven and says, mm -hmm. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus says, then, then there was the Pharisee, mm -hmm. who's like the good guy, you know, because he's a Pharisee, he's very pious. He, he, he prays and fasts and does all these wonderful religious works. And mm -hmm. the, the Pharisee says, thank God, I'm not like this tax collector. Mm -hmm. I fast, <laughs> I pray. You see, he's very proud of the fact that he's not like this horrible human being. But Jesus said that the tax collector went home justified before God. Mm. He was right. He was seen by God as righteous. Now, then Jesus gives the reason why. Mm. And I always pause the story when I'm talking to Christians and say, what is the reason Jesus says in the Gospel of Luke why the tax collector is right before God and not uh, the Pharisee? The good guy, mm. you know, the righteous, holy man who fasts and prays and stuff. And, you know, 99, I think only one Christian's ever got the, the answer right. But 99% <laughs> of the time, they have absolutely no idea what the answer is. And this is the gospel mm. of Jesus. This is what Jesus went around preaching. And the answer Jesus gives, which again is very Islamic, and this could be hadith from the, in mm. my opinion. He says, whoever humbles himself, whoever submits himself to God, will be raised up exalted but whoever mm. exalts himself will be humbled mm. so the way to be righteous to god in god's eyes is to submit yourself to your creator and that is the pure definition of islam this is the definition of what islam is yeah and this is what jesus actually says in the gospel of luke now if we're made righteous before god if we're made acceptable before god by humbling ourselves before our creator why do you need i mean what why do you need anyone to die on the cross for you why do you need mm. a sacrifice for sin why do you need this death and resurrection so you don't need it because you have a direct route to being right and acceptable before god by humbling yourself submitting that's what islam literally means one who submits to god yes that's what I'm right. um so you have these kind of um if you know your gospels well you can pick on hundreds of stories like this, which I just mm. do, and, and and say, look, Jesus said this, he said this, he said this, and this, and it goes completely against the Christian religion, which requires mm. 
that a God become a man who gets crucified and dies on the cross and rose again. And that's how you get your sins forgiven. But that's not what Jesus taught. Yes. Disciples. And what Jesus taught is Islam. Yes, correct. correct. And what, what Jesus did is the things that we Muslims follow, right? Well, yeah, I, I had a conversation yesterday at Speaker's Corner. Um, dreadful place, by the way, but I do go. <laughs> it's just down the road from where I live. And um, I spoke to a Lebanese Christian as a young guy, a very, very pleasant mm -hmm. chap. Um, he looked like a Muslim because he had a beard and stuff. And he's from Lebanon, uh, obviously uh, an Arab speaker and French speaker. But anyway, and uh, he was saying to me, um, yeah, um, he was very keen on saints and following saints and, and Jesus and so on. I, I, he said to me, yeah, well, we, we follow the way of Jesus. You know, we, we follow his path, the way of Jesus. Keep on going about Jesus, following the way of Jesus, how the saints do that. And I said to him, do these saints, and he mentioned one or two of them, do they eat pork by any chance? Well, yeah, <laughs> well, they, they, they might do. You know, if they, they don't eat very much. <laughs> she said this to me. <laughs> they don't eat very much, she said. I think, okay, fair enough. They're, they're, I'm not saying they eat lots of food, but do they eat pork? He said, well, yeah. I think, did Jesus eat pork? I asked this to me question, I, and he looked at me and thought, probably <laughs> And I think, well, no, not, not probably not. He was a Torah observant Jew. Right. Okay, Matthew, he obeyed the law um, quite rigorously, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so, but you say these saints of yours um, mm -hmm. are following the way of Jesus, but if they're not even um, following uh, the way he used to eat, and by observing mm -hmm. the prohibitions on on kosher food. Um, then how can they be following Jesus? Mm. And um, oh, he said, oh well, well in our tradition, uh, you, you know, we, we we abrogated that law. But you, you can eat pork. And I'm saying, hang on, where did Jesus say this? <laughs> um, and, and and I kept on coming back to Jesus, and he didn't really oh. want to talk about Jesus. He wants to talk about the saints and the church. Yeah. I'm thinking that's the problem. Yeah. Islam calls you back to follow the prophets and not the traditions of men, not what your mm. fathers and your forefathers do or did. The Quran says this over and over, you know. Mm. Uh, anyway, so that, that, that but that's a very typical conversation I have with Christians who say, we, we follow Jesus, we love Jesus. And he was saying that a lot of this. I think, well, that's really great. But do you do what he did? Do you practice mm. what he actually, how he lived? And you mm. don't actually. Mm. Uh, mm. Many... Do you circumcise your boys? No, we don't. Well, you know, yeah. Jesus circumcised. He, he was, this is part of the covenant with Abraham. Mm. This goes mm. back to Genesis, way before Israel. Mm. Muslims follow this practice. When you pray, do you put your head on the ground, your forehead on your ground to, in submission? Mm -hmm. Jesus did that. Do you do mm. that? No, we don't. Oh, I see. Do you eat pork? <laughs> yeah. Did Jesus? You go through a leak over and over and over on these things. <laughs> And, you know, if you know your Bible, you can do this. And um, mm. the trick is to, for me, as a challenge to me, to remain a little bit humble, a little bit patient and not, you know, win the argument. Because you can, and this is a danger for people like involved in Dawa, and I'm talking yes. to myself really, rather than anyone else, is that you can win the argument, but lose mm. the person. Yes. It's relatively easy for me, it sounds arrogant, but to win the argument. But it's, very, it's easy for me to lose the person. So you want to build a relationship with this person. You mm -hmm. want to have a good, a good rapport with this person. You want to mm -hmm. invite them to Islam in the most excellent way. That's what the Quran says. It's mm -hmm. not about winning arguments. And I think many of us fall into this trap, particularly at mm -hmm. speakers. And I, I, I'm pointing at myself here before mm -hmm. anyone else, that we think it's about arguments and it's not mm -hmm. about winning debates. It's about... Mm -hmm people to islam and showing them the truth about islam and the truth about jesus and so on yeah yeah really if i have any advice to give is to myself first and i would say dawah is not about winning arguments mm. uh it's about yeah, yeah what, you, you, what i've just said yeah. yeah yeah i'm with you on this uh paul i'm with you on this yeah yeah you are you are very uh how to say this is the way of dawah that we should do yeah we are not going to make a a lot of enemies we are mm. going to make a lot of the followers of islam yeah right mm. in fact that you say in the gospel also we can read that jesus also pray like now muslims do jesus also fell his face on uh, on the ground yeah 
Jesus yeah. also how to say uh, doesn't eat pork like you said and also Jesus also circumcised and in the in their bible uh, in their bible it also uh, written that uh, when Jesus died after the crucifixion people also wrapped him with the white cloth right muslim also do that so Jesus also uh, fasting like us correct yeah so that's actually we muslim follow Jesus so you see Christian, well, well, when, I, when i see many of my muslim brothers in london they even look like jesus <laughs> they, <laughs> you know what i mean i mean they, 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 they come from that part of the world many of them they got beards yes. um, and uh, and arabic is very similar to hebrew slash aramaic you know yes. uh, the salam alaikum in aramaic uh, i can't remember the exact pronunciation very similar they pray like jesus they don't eat pork like jesus they fast like jesus Uh, mm -hmm. And so on. they even look like Jesus, uh, but many <laughs> of them, like you know, drumming their guitars, uh, no yes. beards. Uh, they look like well, they are. These are Western secular people. They they have mm -hmm. Western secular ways of worship uh, with, mm -hmm. with these big uh, uh, bands they play with in big mega churches. This is not. Mm -hmm. This is not uh, the way uh, or the Jewish uh, way or Jesus way of of, of worshiping or, or the Islamic way. It's a very secular Western. Or almost hedonistic way of trying to mm. make religion uh yeah religion attractive to young people but it doesn't really work mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. uh paul i just i just feel that we started this this uh, this discussion a few minutes ago but <laughs> now i realize now is we almost uh do this uh, for one hour mm. <laughs> Mashallah. so before we close our discussion paul I just want to ask you about uh, what do you think that Christianity is actually adopting paganism and Hellenism? What do you say? Well, I'm I, I'm very sad to say that uh, what we call Christianity uh, adopted paganism and Hellenism a long, long, long time ago. Uh, what we see that at the Council of Nicaea when it proclaimed Jesus as God and it used the language of pagan philosophy, homoousion, the idea of the son being of the same substance of the father but it actually used technical language taken from greek pagan philosophy rather than from the prophets i mean, it's again bitter bitter in language uh mm. and the idea of worshiping a human being again is very pagan we see it very common in pagan religions and cults in the ancient world where you would worship the emperor for example who was proclaimed to be divine worshiped heroes or the hercules or even great sportsmen or uh, you know were worshiped uh And unfortunately, in the worship of Christia of the worship of Jesus, uh, which is idolatry, and Jews, mm -hmm. by the way, Orthodox Jews are not permitted to go into a church at mm -hmm. all. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the idolatry of a human being of the claimed Messiah happens there. But Jews mm -hmm. can are allowed under Jewish law to pray in mosques in masjid because mm -hmm. we worship the same one true God. So yes. the, the Jews recognize the same issue as we do that the uh, the corruption of the religion uh and unfortunately it happened very early on e even in the first century with people like mm -hmm. paul but the, at the same time there were jewish christians i want to stress mm -hmm. this associated with people like james the brother of jesus in jerusalem you mm -hmm. actually didn't think that jesus was god didn't think that the messiah somehow uh atoned for their sins and they saw him as a messiah yes um mm -hmm. but they kept their jewish faith but unfortunately that religion that jewish christian religion died out in the second and third centuries um mm -hmm. but, but, but islam continues that tradition if you like of, it's very similar to the jewish christian religion in mm -hmm. honoring Jesus as a messiah a messenger a human being um without without uh, worshiping him jews of course deny him which is which is another issue mm -hmm. uh, paul do you know how the jews call christianity in their language tell me how avoda zara which means which mean the idol worshippers yeah no it's, no it's, this is yeah I, i knew i knew that's what they said i didn't know the the words in that language no this yeah. is true yeah. and it, it's a very harsh word but it's technically accurate it is literally yes. accurate uh, and uh, i don't think we should go around to our christian friends or neighbors and say you are not, you are practicing idolatry no uh, no no, no. <laughs> uh, but 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 that is what they are doing uh and um and this is a terrible uh sin actually uh, mm -hmm. sin against yeah yeah so oh thank you so much we Pleasure. have done one hour discussion which right. is very 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 fruitful 
I wish we can do this again, Paul. Actually, yeah. I still have a lot of questions to ask you. Happy to come on again, inshallah, if you have any more. I can't promise I have answers to your questions, but I will try. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if I have a, a, a specific topic, I will call you again, right? Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah. And I hope I hope you are well. And uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome, Assalam. Thank you so much. Till next time. Terima kasih banyak ya perhatiannya para pemirsa. Tadi uh, sebuah diskusi yang sangat menarik dengan Brother Paul Williams di UK ya, di Inggris. Masya Allah, beliau sangat menguasai doktrin-doktrin daripada kekristenan. Di mana kita perlu memberitahukan kepada para saudara-saudara muslim kita. Supaya apa? Supaya terbentengi akidah Islam dan juga terhindar daripada upaya-upaya pemurtatan. Nah, terima kasih banyak perhatiannya para pemirsa. Buat para pemirsa yang ingin mendukung perjuangan dakwah kami, dipersilahkan untuk mengirimkan ke BSI dengan nomor rekening 1 88 8 dan uh, bisa mengkonfirm uh, sorry atas nama YPM Atawi Jakarta dan bisa mengkonfirmasikan ke nomor handphone 0813 9883 7007. semoga partisipasi para pemirsa diterima di sisi Allah Subhanahu wa taala sebagai amal jariah ya. Amin ya rabbal alamin. Baik kalau begitu kami undur diri Uh, akhir kata wabillahi taufiq walidayah wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh